Hey everybody, welcome to week five of the vlog, uh, making some real headway with the project now. Uh, this week I'm gonna be covering um, adding some greenery to the pieces that I've made already. So that's gonna be grass scatters, shrubs, and how to make your own vines. I'm gonna be looking at how I'm making my own sculptor mold uh, for use on the board pieces to add um, some texture and build ups to the undulation of the ground. And I'm gonna take a look at how I'm building the city wall section. So I've done enough casts now that I can get on with one section. So let's get to it. Okay, so before I get started, a quick rundown of materials. So I've got here some clump foliage in pots. Um, I will only open these and use them one at a time. I've made the mistake of leaving the lids off and knocking them over in the past. Um, I've got some blended turf. This is the Woodland Scenics Fine Foam uh, materials. And I've got a little bit of the coarse turf, which is the chunkier pieces. Um, I've got my spray, which is isopropyl alcohol and water in a little spray bottle. And I've got watered down PVA glue or Mod Podge or wood glue. Um, it's about a 10 to 1 mix, so it's quite watery um, to seal everything in. And the piece I've got here has been completed with the ground textures that I've looked at before in the previous video. And I'm going to be jazzing it up with the plant life and also hiding one or two issues. I dropped the piece, which was pretty stupid, but given that it was dropped, only a tiny little bit of damage. So I'm very happy with that and the robustness of the pieces. And I knocked one or two stones off while the ground was still drying. So I can hide all these issues with bushes and jazz up the piece to make it look uh, a lot more realistic. Right, so step number one is to get the ground textures down uh, on top of the dirt. So what you need to start with is you need to start with this material. This is the um, coarse uh, turf. It's little grains um, of, the, of the turf. It comes in its different colours, which is colour matched with all the other materials. And this kind of adds like a scrubland kind of effect uh, when you put it on because um, of its chunkiness and sits under the fine turf really well. Right, so I started by applying a thin layer of watered down uh, PVA glue or Mod Podge. Um, this is to bind all the pieces that are gonna go on top and hold them in place. You can do this directly on top of the ground covers if you're in a rush, but I like to let the dirt dry first and make sure it looks good enough before I go in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this material and I'm just gonna sprinkle a few bits here and there in kind of the more tucked away parts where like the grass would grow thicker if it wasn't trodden on. Um, I mean, this is a ruin, so less of an issue, but if you're doing paths and stuff like that, you need to think about uh, making it look a little bit realistic. You can build it up in a few places to kind of make a little bush thing. And you just want to get this one down uh, first. Then what I'm going to go in with after that is the turf. So this is your very, very fine grain stuff. So this is blended turf because it's a mixture of like greens and yellows and forms a really good basis for all of the things you want to put down. So you just need to gently sprinkle it. And what I like to do is sprinkle it over the pot. So any bits that you miss go back in the pot. And at first it looks way too green, but you've got to kind of follow the process with this one. So this is kind of like your base layer or base coat is a good way of thinking about it. This is your main color. Um, and the variety of the yellows and the greens really make it look um, a bit more broken up than just a solid green. They do a grass one, uh, which I'm not the biggest fan of um, because it's just a little bit too monotone. So first of all, get this down on top like that. And you can see here it's gone over the top of the uh, bushy bits and kind of made it look a little bit like broken ground. I can put a bit more on here. Um, and where I've not put it on top of them, they look like little bushes. So that's a great place to start. Then you've got to think about it like painting a miniature after that. So you've got to go in with your shadows and your shading. So what I've got next is the pot of the weeds, which is the fine turf, but it's in a darker green. And what you want to do is you want to sprinkle this where uh, moisture would gather and where the plants would grow dark, darker. So I'm going to put it in the corners like this just in here and up against the wall. So if you've got undulating ground, what this would do is this would go in all the recesses to kind of make them um, darker and appear where more water would gather. Now, right now, um, as with putting a shade on for the first time, it can look a little um, stark, the difference. Um, it's coming out fairly well on camera. Um, so the, the difference is you then need to go in with your next uh, color, which would be a highlight. So this is called burnt grass. So it's their bright green. And what you need to do is put this in places where the ground would be more trodden, or if it's on higher ground, 
because um, this is your highlight. So again, I'm going to put a little bit here. Um, imagine this is where people would come into the ruins if they're going to take positions or or like a patrol would check. Um, and a little bit here because it's a little higher ground and a bit here as well. It's a bit more exp exposed and the grass wouldn't grow as well. Now again, looks a little uh, high in contrast at the moment, but th those are setting the base tones. And then what you do is you go in with the blended turf again, and as per the name, you use this to blend the two together. So now you want to put a very light layer just over the top here. And you can see I'm being very sparingly with it. Um, and it just breaks up the transition between the colors and kind of makes everything look a little bit more natural. Um, and what you want to do is kind of just make sure you go over only the bits where they are different colors. See now where the bright green is here and the dark green is here, putting this little bit of blended color, which has got all those colors in it, has made those two merge together. You still get the darkened effect where the wall is, and you still get these lighter patches where trodden ground is, um, but it doesn't look too stark. So that's the point where I'm happy with it. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm once again going to uh, give it a spray with the isopropyl alcohol and water. I will off camera spray it with um, the watered down PVA glue in a spray bottle. So this, you do it very gently from a distance. A few bits will flick off, but that's okay. You can just push them back on and they tend to apply a little bit more anyway, knowing it's gonna come off. Spray it with the PVA. And what you've got here, where you've got these bushy bits, um, this is what the dropper bottle is for. So spray this stuff on from quite a distance so you don't jet too much material off. And then go in with the watered down glue and just drip it on top and let it soak in a little bit. And this will just bind everything together and give everything a lot more stability uh, on the model. Right, it's had its spray glue layer and you can see that it's soaked in and everything is really, really wet, but it's not overflowing everywhere. And this is the perfect place to have it. So it will dry nicely and bind everything together to form a nice solid layer, uh, but it's not gonna ruin the look by clogging it up with glue. Right, next up, I'm coming in with the clump. So taking it out of the pot, you can see these are much, much, much bigger uh, size than the little um, coarse turf pieces. And what you can do is you can actually tear these into the sizes that you want. And I've got a little pot with a bit of PVA glue on here. So I'm just gonna dunk it in the PVA glue and then I'm gonna push it onto where you want to stick it down to the piece and be generous with the PVA glue. Uh, any tiny little bits that overflow, you can either mop them up with a brush or you can actually just sprinkle a little bit more flock on there to kind of hide where the glue is. Um, so again, these are gonna kind of go in places where people won't be walking. And this is the medium size, this is the medium shade green. Um, I'm just gonna put another little one, I think, round the front here. Um, like this here and then what you want to do is you want to get the dark and again use it like a shade so just get a little piece and put it like under the edge of where the bush is just to kind of vary the color slightly so it looks a little bit more realistic where there are different colors you can get this in the burnt grass as well um, but I'm just going to use these two colors because I think I want these pieces to be a little bit more run down I don't want anything too bright on them. So I'm kind of happy where it is. You do get a little bit of displacement like I showed before, um, which is fine because it shows the dirt underneath, which is why I use real dirt. And then once everything's dried, if I'm not happy with certain pieces, I will just go in and, and touch them up afterwards. So the best thing is to do is now let this dry overnight and see how it looks tomorrow. And here's an example of another piece I've done where you get the final look. Here I did use the brighter bushes and you can see that mixing the shades um, is really good. The ground has this nice um, light and dark where the rocks are that it's darker. And uh, if I actually like tap these, you can see that having a couple of layers of PVA, maybe three of the this stuff soaked in and dried, and they still look like really nice realistic bushes. You can't see the glue, um, but they are super tough for gaming on. Right, time to move on to making the vines. So I've assembled everything you're gonna need here. Um, I've got the piece to put the vines on. I've got a little mixing pot to put everything in. Um, something shallow is good, so it's easy to uh, dip in this cotton material. So my wife informs me that this is Aran, which is important because of the number of strands. Major question mark, she's the knitter. Um, this is made of cotton, so it's not um, an acrylic uh, type of yarn that will have issues soaking up any paint and colour. Um, it's made of cotton and you can see there are individual little strands. So you can use this to make vines that are quite thick by using the whole strand, or as you can see, you can very easily 
um, unwind it into a couple of strands to make thinner branches. And I've got a black and a brown here to make a nice dark brown colour for the body of the vine. And I'm going to mix these together with the PVA and a little bit of water to make a, a slurry that I'm going to dip the vine uh, or this yarn into to make the vine. I'm going to lay it across the piece and show you how to kind of make it look realistic, which is super easy. Then give it a little bit of time to set and apply a little bit of watered down PVA just over the branch. And then I'm going to sprinkle on, again, the blended turf. So this is the fine stuff that has a mixture of colours in there. So it looks really good for plant life. So let's move across to the time lapse. Right, so I've got the vine ready to go and the piece that I'm going to work on. I've washed my fingers mostly uh, off camera so that I don't get brown on everything. So I'm going to try and maybe raise the piece up a little bit, see if that's easier to see. And what I'm going to do is take this um, piece of cotton. It's soaked in the PVA glue mix and you can see it's wet but not dripping. A little bit transfers but not a lot. So what I'm going to do is start it at the ground level. So a good place to start this is going to be... Uh, like just here on the ground and then I'm roughly laying it across the piece for now um, making it look realistic because it would climb up it's better on camera like that and what I'm then going to do is use the paintbrush just got an old GW brush here and I'm just going to push it kind of um, into the cracks here and there because a vine would grow up where it can get purchase um, and this is fairly manipulable, is that a real word? Um, and I can just put a little bit of paint glue on it if I feel like it's not sticking very well, and then try and make it grow in different directions. So if you get a little bit of paint on the building, um, etc., not to worry, we can sort that out in a second, um, and just have it change direction a few times so it looks more interesting, um, and then where it is uh, going up, over the top here. I'm just going to stick this down a little. Um, this is the damaged piece that I want to hide, so I'm going to put a little bit of paint glue mix on it um, and push the vine across to make sure it goes over that bit. And then I'll probably put a branching piece um, on there to help uh, with the hiding of the issue. And then I'll wrap it around here like this. And the key is to just keep adding little bits of the glue paint mix um, if you're having trouble bending it um, and it will make sure that it then becomes a little bit more flexible and then I'm going to push it into the corner here like this and have it run down the side of the building here and again trying to get it to curl a little bit so that it looks a bit more realistic and what I can do is also add um, a few sort of thinner, smaller branches coming off. Um, so there you go, there's the start of it. So what I'm going to now do is clean my brush on a piece of tissue and where I've got a little bit of glue on the bricks here, if I just blend this out, you will hardly even notice and it will just look like another aged dirt patch on the wall, which is not a problem. See, okay, covered up half of it here. If I have another branching piece come off there, it will completely mask that issue. And um, because there's a lot of PVA glue in this, it'll give it a bit of strength as well. So what I'm going to do is probably do a couple more and then leave them to half dry for like 30 minutes. Um, so the glue starts to take, then I will use the thinned PVA glue to start applying the foliage. Okay, I've half dried the glue with the aid of a heat gun, but you could just leave it to stand. And you can see that the twisted nature of the yarn means that you get this kind of gnarly look to the, to the structure, which is really nice. Right now, it does kind of just look like some form of string or yarn with the um, paint soaked into it. It doesn't look super real. So what I'm going to do now is get a little bit of thinned PVA glue that I keep in this bottle um, and just put some over the top of the shape of the branch like this. This will also help the whole thing set in place. And I'm just going to put a little bit on like that just to show you. So this kind of will give the basis for the turf to stick to. And I'm just going to open the pot and get this on. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little tiny bit of it on and get it over the branch. And this is why applying the PVA glue carefully is important because then going to tap off the excess back into the pot and you're left with 
a really nice looking creeping vine. So this glue will dry and I will put a watered down layer over the top to bind it to the stem and also to again bind the stem to the wall so it's never going to come off. And you can see that I've hidden that damage at the top by putting a branching piece where I pulled some of the threads out here, thinner, and then a little thin vine coming up the side and going around here. So I'll add the green to all this and see how it comes out. Right, so the flocking applied all over, looks nice and realistic. And what I've done here is just put a bush where it started because it kind of looks a bit weird popping straight out of the ground. Um, but overall, for a couple of minutes work, it's really added a lot of aged look to the piece um, and also helped cover up a few issues. So a massive win-win. I will let it dry and give it another coat of PVA and then it's good to go. Okay, here's a collection of things that are gonna be needed to make our own sculptor mold. So this is a product that you mix up with water. Um, it contains plaster and paper fibers and you use it for filling in places like this as a ground texture. So on a previous video, I used just plaster of Paris, which is absolutely fine, um, but Sculptor Mold sets a lot harder and lighter because of the inclusion of the paper fibers. It has kind of like a fiberglass effect, and it's super easy to make. All you need is some plaster. So this is casting plaster, but you can use plaster of Paris easily, uh, water to mix together, and the 2020 white gold that is toilet paper. Uh, you can buy it now, at least in the UK, UK you can um, so I feel free to use it in my hobby again so I'm gonna do another time lapse to show you how to put this all together with a voiceover and then we'll apply it to this and let it set and see how it comes out so first step is to add the plaster to the water and make your normal plaster mix and then add the toilet paper afterwards to get the right consistency okay time to apply it to the model and you can see it's got kind of a thick um, pasty texture. You're supposed to mix it up like cottage cheese. I mean, I don't like or eat cottage cheese, but this is, as you can see, kind of a thick paste that's holding its shape. And that's the real benefit over the um, plain plaster is that it holds its shape straight away and you can really, really mold it to what you want it to look like. So this piece at the moment, if you can see, has quite a lot of flex in it. Um, so I used three or five mil um, EPVC. Um, so it's got a little bit of flex to it. So hopefully putting this on and where it sets really, really hard um, will stop that flex and give it a lot of extra strength without it weighing too much. So I'm gonna apply it um, across a section here and let it set. And then once I've finished the whole piece, I'll come back and take a look at it. Okay, so I lightly scored the surface in between here with, here with a hobby knife for about 30 seconds, and now I'm just gonna put the paste on. So I'm gonna be very careful to try not to get it on the model. Um, if you do get it on the model, uh, it's not too bad. You can just wipe it off with a wet brush, but you've got not a lot of time to do it before it starts to set up. So you can see it's quite a thick paste here, and I'm gonna use it to fill in the gaps, and I'm gonna push it kind of up against um, the, the actual terrain piece without uh, getting it on top. And this is just the rough um, application. We're gonna smooth it out um, as it starts to set. So after about 10 minutes of this being on, uh, the plaster will start to set and it becomes much firmer to work with. And this is the point when you can start um, smoothing out all these lumpy bits and, and making the shapes uh, that you want it to finally be in. So I'm just applying it roughly here, being very careful. And this is why to do it in small batches, um, because it will start to go off um, and you don't want to be left with a whole load of it setting in the pot because it's a waste and you can't get it onto the model once it starts to set. It just becomes too difficult to work with. It's a bit like working with epoxy glue uh, where you have to bear in mind the setting time and the speed. So again, I'm going to put this up here. Now, this is not the final look. Obviously, I will paint this and then put the ground textures on as I did in a previous video um, and make everything look pretty realistic. Um, and this is, again, just to get the shape and the strength without it weighing too much. Right, so it's had its 10 minutes to set up and I've gone over it with just a damp finger to kind of smooth everything out and push it in amongst all these cracks to kind of blend everything together. What I thought would be interesting is to add a little bit more shape to the piece. So I want to have this as a ruin, um, but also um, it could be somewhere where, you know, defenders take up positions or scouts frequently come and check um, as part of a territorial thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray a little bit of water over the top of the surface and I'm gonna add sort of like a worn pathway effect. So again, I'm using my finger to smooth and you can see it's a lot firmer now, um, but I'm just gonna kind of put like a pathway track um, in the surface and it does move out the way nicely. 
And this will just be so that when the ground covers, etc., go over the top, you can kind of get the impression um, that this is where people walk a lot. And again, I'm not going to have it go to the edge of the piece uh, because these are going to be interchangeable. So you don't want to have it so that the path goes right to the edge and you would need to have the edge continue onto your board. So with the modularity planned, a bit more water, um, I need to have it so that any effects don't really carry over beyond the bounds of the piece. So here where I get to the edge of the sculpture mold that I've applied so far, I'm still going to put the texture in like this. Um, and then what will happen is when I put more sculptor mold here, it will bind together and I can continue the, the trail maybe around to here and have it finish. The key is when this is all dried and set and I want to put more alongside, I just need to wet the surface here so that where the sculptor mold, new and old touch, and they bind together chemically and are really solid and are not going to come apart in any way. I don't want to crack forming down. Okay, time to make the castle wall. This is my stack of cast pieces I've been working on this week. Um, so these were so much easier to do one at a time and only make six rather than the massive number of like 60 odd casts it would have taken to do me. So what I'm going to do is bind them to this piece of um, chipboard um, which will then get stuck to the wall section. So this will help hold everything together really well because this straight onto the polystyrene um, I don't think will be as strong as putting this cardboard layer in between. So I'm going to stick three of these down onto this board. I've um, got this packing um, material from the plastic card that I ordered before. It's got this uh, protective sheet on that the glue won't stick to if there's any squeeze out. I'm going to use the Gorilla uh, polyurethane glue again it's super good and really binds well to the plaster and the paper and I've got a little spray bottle of water to activate it. Uh, once all that's done um, you need a good sharp knife to trim the card around the final shape. These do overhang slightly um, but I'm going to get them on this one board as best I can and just put a thin edging strip down here and then get the whole thing mounted onto the polystyrene. As before, I'm using a child's glue spreader to spread out the polyurethane glue and then spraying water on the back of the other piece so that they get a good uh, binding. The water activates the glue and causes it to foam up and set. So you need that on there to make sure everything sticks together properly. Right, the glue's cured and this piece is firmly stuck to the board, which is great. So I've cut a piece of polystyrene here to go inside the wall to give me the volume at uh, next to zero weight. So what I'm going to do is spread the glue out over the polystyrene. I'm going to be using the Gorilla Glue again because it really just is the best for this sort of job. And then I'll be placing this piece over the top and weighing it down. The piece of polystyrene is undercut slightly on the edges so I can put a piece of card over this to give it some um, durability because these can be individual wall pieces and on top I've undercut it ever so slightly so that I will be able to put another piece of wall along the back here to give it texture and then put a stone cap on top so it'll look like a stone capped wall with the texture on the inside and I'll probably just gravel um, the actual surface here to keep it nice and simple. So it's going to go down with the glue and then when it's all cured it will be done and that's my progress for the week. Um, hope you've enjoyed uh, following along and I'll be back on it next week.